Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to another episode of the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Now, as I prepare to launch this show on Spotify, I'm more than aware of the evolution of the podcasting industry and how it's changing and getting more and more sophisticated. But my curious mind keeps asking questions such as what's next for the industry and how are advertisers going to get increasingly involved? Now, after hearing about a company called Cadence 13 and how they partner and develop podcasts and the hugely successful Up and Vanish podcast, which incidentally is preparing to launch season two with some pretty big surprises, I invited them on the show today. So if you love podcasting and you're also interested in how the medium is evolving, you're in for a treat today. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to San Francisco where growth-orientated entrepreneur and CEO of Cadence 13, Spencer Brown, is waiting to speak with us. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Spencer. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. I am Spencer Brown. I'm the CEO of Cadence 13. We are one of the leading podcast networks in the United States. Come out of uh, network radio, where I was the CEO of of Westwood One, formerly known as Dial Global. And in uh, 2015, we started Cadence 13. And, And when I say we, it was myself, John Murphy, who's president and president of sales, and Chris Corcoran, who's our chief content officer, And so the company is a combination of team of network radio veterans on the one hand. And on the other hand, you know, we've really tried to find, you know, people that are like minded, that love audio and podcasting and build the team out so that it's not a matter of reuniting the Westwood band, but really trying to build a team of of very engaged, interested, you know, people that want to build something great in a relatively new space. Now, Cadence 13 is often described as the Netflix of podcasts and syndicates some of the biggest shows out there. But for anyone out there that's just tuning in and new to what you guys are doing, can you offer a brief introduction to what you do at Cadence 13 and some of those big shows? Sure. I'd have to preface it by saying that it's very flattering to be considered the Netflix of anything. And um, while we have grand ambitions, we should only be as successful as them. But Um, Our strategy is to be a fully integrated podcast network, and by that, I mean we have the ability to create ideas with our uh, brand partners, we produce the content, um, we market it and help them build audiences, and then ultimately, you know, we have a sales team that monetizes the content as well. So our approach is really to partner with leading influencers, you know, in their various verticals and build excellent audio content right now with them, Um, and in that regard, you know, I think we've been successful in identifying um, and launching some great podcasts with those partners. And you really have been successful because um, just to name one show, Up and Vanished was one of the biggest podcasts of 2017 with more than 140 million downloads and hundreds of media stories that surround it, of course. But if anybody listening somehow missed that uh, podcast, can you bring them up to speed with that, without revealing any spoilers, of course, for people who are going to check it out later? Sure. I, I would never reveal any spoilers <laughs> Uh, with a show called Up and Vanished. But um, we're very excited about um, partnering with Up and Vanished and having them become part of the, the Cadence family, if you will. And Up and Vanished is, uh, is a show that was launched by an investigative journalist named Payne Lindsay. Um, he wanted to take his journalistic school uh, skills and inspired by Serial, um, transport them over to audio and start a podcast around uh, a case that, that was a cold case. And so um, he did some research and found a case that involved a woman named Tara Grinstead. And, uh, and really Up and Vanished is a serial um, podcast, if you will, that really goes back into the case um, and, and tries to tell a revised story about it. I don't want to say where the story ended in case people haven't tuned in, but um, it's very compelling. Now, for season two, I've also been reading how Cadence 13 and Up and Vanished are attempting to redefine exactly what a podcast can be, and as a result, also changing them from that static one-way distribution method to an engaging multi-dimensional media platform. I mean, that sounds incredibly exciting. Can you expand on that? Sure. I, I want to preface it by saying that the Up and Vanished team, the Tenderfoot team, have, have already begun a dialogue with their fans. They do a lot of live events, and so 
you know, they've really begun the model of having fans become more engaged in the content rather than just uh, listening to a one-way conversation. Yeah. But we want to expand that by, um, by essentially having fans interact with the content, whether it be by, um, by calling in or having uh, chat rooms regarding the content, again, continuing the live event footprint. And I should mention at this point that over the summer, Cadence 13 uh, partnered with Intercom Communications, which is the second, as of Friday, will be the second largest radio company in the country. And so we're working with Intercom um, to possibly do, th do some things live on radio with Payne and having callers, uh, having listeners call in. So it'll give uh, the fans, you know, a number of different ways to interact with the content other than just listening to it, uh, you know, by downloading it, which, of course, you know, we, uh, you know, we look forward to as well and encourage. I love the fact that you're fusing the two together there, traditional radio and podcasts. Was that a conscious decision to boost engagement? Absolutely. We feel that radio, and again, we're, we're biased in a good way. We come out of traditional network radio, but we feel that terrestrial radio has a role to play in the podcasting landscape, that there's an ability to amplify and build audiences by fusing um, traditional radio and podcasting. It's been executed very successfully by NPR, and we believe that with Intercom and their, uh, their base of hundreds of radio stations around the country, that we have the ability to create essentially a national network that can amplify the content that's being produced by our podcasting partners. Now, the podcasting industry really does seem to be evolving at the moment and getting much more sophisticated. And what I love about you guys is you've come right from the beginning, from the radio era as well. So, I mean, I've got to ask, how have you seen it change and what do you think the future of podcasting is in your eyes? Well, we've seen it change dramatically in the two plus years um, since we launched uh, Cadence. I think one thing is really, uh, you know, at the beginning, especially with the agencies, but also the content creators, there was the question of, you know, is this a hobby or a business? And I think that the answer, you know, has been definitively uh, that it's a business now. We've seen revenues um, initially projected, you know, in the tens of millions that are now projected in the hundreds of millions. So, you know, the business has definitely grown. And I think there's an acceptance that it, it is becoming um, mainstream. So I think, uh, you know, another thing is um, I don't have to answer the question, what's a podcast quite as frequently as I did two and a half years ago. So just the fact that podcasts um, are becoming more mainstream, you know, is a big change in and of itself. I think as part of that, every media company that we've spoken to either has a podcasting strategy or is developing one. So that initial conversation, you know, which maybe two plus years ago is, you know, should I do this? has now transformed to how can we do this or, or how can we do this together? And then that's translated over on the, uh, the advertising side where marketers you know, are more and more not only accepting this as a medium, but really you know, having a conversation about how they can best participate. So you know, it's still early days, but I think we have um, transitioned from you know, something that uh, there were a lot of questions around to really mass acceptance. And now it's a matter of you know, really fulfilling our obligations to listeners to provide them with something, you know, that's worth them engaging with in the very personal way that they do with podcasting. And if that happens, audiences will build and we believe marketers will follow. You said there it is early days. I mean, podcasting's been around for years, hasn't it? But it does seem that we're only just starting to get that mainstream adoption. And like you say there, you don't have to explain what a podcast is whenever you mention it to anyone. So there's a great sign on its own. And I was delighted to hear recently that this show is going to be added to Spotify in the next two weeks, which who also seem to be slowly dipping their toes into the world of podcasts. I mean, do you think that will continue? And with 60 million paid subscribers, do you think people that normally wouldn't listen to podcasts are going to adopt the format too? I mean, do you think podcasts will go mainstream or do you think they already have? Well, I obviously consider that it's already mainstream. Yeah. Um, you know, we're so involved in, in, uh, in, the, in the echo chamber, if you will. But I think with regards and with respect to Spotify, um, they've been a great partner. We've actually had some of our podcasts on there uh, going back over a year. But, you know, as far as the acceleration of audience, the more places that people can, quote unquote, find their favorite podcast, you know, the better. Obviously, Spotify has a large uh, subscriber base, embedded base. And, and so, you know, that introduces some people that might not find the podcast um, on Apple or Stitcher or Google or other places, um, just better likelihood of them discovering. 
discovery is still, uh, you know, one of the challenges um, for podcasts. So again, the more companies like Spotify get involved, we think the better or the easier uh, discovery will be. So we're very excited about it. I think from a Cadence 13 perspective, you know, it really validates our strategy of, of partnering and producing, you know, high premium podcasts, if you will. Um, we're not about tonnage. We're really very selective in who we partner with. And I think Spotify appreciated that. And therefore, you know, we've got a nice relationship with them, you know, where we're able to use them for distribution. And if we do have any indie podcasters listening out there, I mean, can you just talk me through the process of how podcasts get picked up by the likes of Cadence 13 or Gimlet? I mean, what is it that attracts you to a podcast? And equally, what are the biggest mistakes that you see indie podcasters making? Sure, I can't speak for Gimlet, but with Cadence, we're really looking to partner with influencers in their various you know, fields or verticals, if you will. So we started the company uh, with a partnership with Recode and Kara Swisher. Kara is obviously the leading um, tech journalist in Silicon Valley, and so that was ripe for us. Uh, very engaged fan base um, has a point of view on on many issues, and it was it was really ripe for you know an, an initial launch for us, and also an extension of her brand into audio. Um, following that, you know, we did a podcast with Adrian Morjanowski, um, leading journalist in in uh, of the National Basketball Association. So the the theme for us is really not focusing on any one vertical, but partnering, um, you know, with influencers, whether it be uh, Tony Kornheiser, Crooked Media and Politics, and obviously Payne Lindsay being, you know, influential in the investigative journalist, um, you know, true crime genre. So that's how we pick partners, if you will. Yeah. You know, in terms of, of the one theme that we've seen consistently applied across all different uh, podcasts is engagement, or, or just in simple English, having a point of view. If you're going to launch something you know, you've really got to come at it with, um, you know, with a with a point of view. It's got to be about engaging the listener. It really can't be about amusing yourself. And so I think we're having a conversation with uh, just whoever, you know, your partners, if you have one. Um, so that's the advice that we would give anybody that wants to launch a podcast is, you know, have something, have a point of view, be engaging. And, um, and you're either going to want to engage your existing audience or if you're building a new one, you know, in order to break through, it's really got to be something special. And that's what we're trying to identify. Fantastic. And as for the future of the industry as a whole, I mean, how do you see that evolving? And how do you also see advertisers getting more and more involved in this medium? For the future, I mean, obviously, we really see the growth trajectory continuing to accelerate, you know, over the foreseeable future, both from a market size and a, and a content size and a listener uh, perspective. I think in order for that to happen, and we're already starting to see it, you know, um, discovery, I think, is something that's going to become um, easier and easier. I think distribution platforms are going to start to proliferate. Right now, Apple, who we've got a great partnership with, is the uh, is probably the leading um, distribution center or distribution hub for podcasts. But we believe that um, that Alexa will start to become you know an area where people get their podcasts. Obviously, we talked about Spotify a little bit, Google, Stitcher. You know, we think you know there'll be more and more sites, if you will, or places to uh, to consume your favorite podcast. So I think that'll help with audience. And then I think, you know, as we discussed, I think more and more content providers, whether they be um, existing media companies, independent filmmakers, journalists, are going to try to figure out how they can participate, you know, in this medium, which will, uh, the more content there is, you know, the more potential for engagement with listeners. So I don't think I'm going out on a limb by, by saying we see, you know, growth really accelerating, uh, quality to continue, um, you know, to improve. And I think marketers, you know, they're looking for audiences in this world where they can um, make a connection with consumers. So, you know, that's how I think they'll end up continuing to participate in this market. Well, a huge thank you for coming on the show today. But before I do let you go, can you remind the listeners of where they can find your podcast, including season two of Up and Vanish, and also how they can directly engage with your team? I'll take the easy part first. You can engage with our team um, by going to our website at Cadence, C-A-D-E-N-C-E, Cadence13.com. And there's uh, there's an area where you can leave comments or uh, or request that one of us get back to you. And as far as uh, Up and Vanish, that can be found in season one and two on, uh, on any place you consume your favorite podcast, um, including Up and Vanish's own site, as well as the Cadence 13 site, Apple Podcasts, and uh, Spotify, and the rest of them. So, you know, we're looking forward to, uh, to season two, which should launch in the spring, and uh, very excited about the future with them. 
Fantastic. Well, I think podcasting is continuously evolving at the moment. But what I love about what you guys are doing is you're constantly pushing the envelope to continuously improve it. And also, engagement is the end game. So I think it's a fantastic thing that you're doing. I really appreciate you taking the time for coming on today and just sharing your thoughts and insights. I appreciate your time and the opportunity to uh, to tell the Cadence story. I don't know about you guys, but I'm quite eager to check out Up and Vanish. I mean, I love how the team at Cadence 13 are not just churning out content. They are evolving the entire medium of podcasts, like I said in the interview there. Because these stories that we're sharing around virtual camp fires together, just like what our ancestors did hundreds if not thousands of years ago. Although they drifted from town to town sharing stories and building a tribe, we're doing exactly the same thing now online. But I think that engagement could be improved and this is just one of the many reasons that I champion what Spencer and his team at Cadence 13 are actually doing here. Speaking of engagement, what did you think of today's show and the talking points around it? And also, where are you listening and what are you doing? I mean, whether it's walking the dog or sat on the 713 train uh, to your office, I want you to be my eyes. Yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Longtime Listener and First Time Caller. And also, yes, you, the lady sat in the corner there. I want you to take your phone out of your bag or your pocket now and stealth me a photo of exactly what you see each morning as you listen to this show. And as always, tweet it to me at Neil C. Hughes or email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. But enough of me of my crazy and some would say unreasonable demands as a podcast host to get to know you a little bit better. But it's time for me to walk off into the sunset now and leave the mic behind. So a big thank you for tuning in. I'll return tomorrow with another great guest. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.